God. I mean, yeah, when you hear the story, you'll be like, oh, okay, that's kind of fucked. Yeah, we can talk to him. So, I was uh, oh, I, doing... Sorry, yeah. before we start, before we start, I should say, I was going to keep it going as a joke, but since this sounds like it is an appeal, I am an actual lawyer, so I can help you do the appeal. Uh, oh, Mr. Awesome. Cross here can... Yeah, he can help too, but uh, just so you know, I am a lawyer, so... Oh, beautiful, beautiful. That's actually perfect. I just, uh, I just want to know if I've, if I've definitely got a case here. I feel like I have, but, you know, make sure here. Now... Yep. So, uh, myself and a, uh, a good friend of mine, Ben Silly Sai, we were doing uh, doing some news reporting, you know, just doing a bit of work here and there. Then we had a car crash. Uh, he went through the windscreen. I then had to get him to the hospital. I took him to the hospital. He needed surgery by a doctor named... Uh, what was her name? Hold on, I've got it here. Um, her name is Kazoo Wood. Now, he needed to go surgery, so myself, Dr. Wood, and Ben went to the surgery room. I followed through. Um, they let me go in. She let me go in there. She never said once about, about me not being allowed in there or anything like that. Um, I was in the surgery room with him, you know, and I, and I, and I had a knife on me, okay? A legal knife. Nothing wrong with having a knife. And I was like, I had the knife out and I was like, do you need a hand with the with the surgery? You know, him be my friend, you know, and it's fucking, you know what it's like, if mates, you have banter, you know, type thing. And she's like, she was just like, oh, can you please put that away? No, no, no. And I was like, hey, sweet. I put it away. Uh, and she, I don't think she even asked me to put it away, to be fair, but anyway, I put it away and I was like, hey, sweet. And then I was hanging around there and then um, she walked out of the room for a minute and then I was like crouched down beside him and I was just like, Hey mate, you want me to give you, give you, you want me to do some surgery? I'll just do some of your leg, mate. Just giving him shit, you know, type thing. And I had the knife, and then, uh, and then she comes in. She's like, "I need you to leave the surgery room and put that away." I was like, "Okay, sweet." So I put it away, and I went to leave. And then I was like, "Oh, I just need to get the um, the news story from him so I can hand it in, and then I'll get him to give me a call after he's out of surgery." And he was a bit groggy, so I was like, "Hey mate, I'm just gonna get the get the news story out of your pocket so I can go and fucking." Hand it in for us while he's getting surgery. I then asked her to tell him to give me a call when he's out of surgery. She said, yes, she will. And I was like, okay, cool, thank you. So I went to go do that for us. And I got to the door and it was locked. I couldn't get out. So I went back and I was like, hey, um, I'm, I'm locked in. And she didn't answer me. So I was stood there like, what the fuck do I do now? Next minute, um, I hear fucking cops at the at the locked door. I then was like, "Hey, sweet, they're obviously looking for someone." Didn't know I was, they were looking for me because I fucking you know, I didn't threaten anyone to do anything. I was just you know nothing at all. Um, anyway, I went to the door to leave, and when I opened it, there was six cops standing there with all their guns out, pointed at me, and they told me to put my hands up and all that, and rah, 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 And I was like, "Whoa, whoa, I haven't fucking done anything. I'm 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 just here. I'm just." Like, you know, I was trying to tell them I, would, I haven't done nothing wrong. Like, I'm, I'm just leaving. And then uh, they told me to stop. I was like, well, I walked this way. And I had my hands up and I kept walking. And I was like, come walk. Come to the doctor. I haven't done anything. And I walked to the surgery room. They're getting me on. Um, they're trying to do me for uh, disobeying a lawful order because they asked me to stop. Which, I guess, is fair because I didn't stop. But I had my hands up and I just walked to the surgery room. Like, literally fucking 10 steps. And said, look, talk to the doctor and talk to fucking and all that like I haven't done anything um anyway they then decided to fucking go through my pocket search me and everything they found out obviously a fucking uh, an illegal gun and all that on me and I got done for a whole bunch of other shit right which is fine they found all that shit on me that's cool however if this doctor was in so much fucking danger and feel like she was in so much fucking danger why did she lock me inside with her with the patient, and why did she not even lock the actual surgery room doors at all? She left it wide open. Also, I never threatened her once or anything like that. Yeah, and sure. there's no proof as well of me even getting a fucking knife out. It's literally just her fucking, which, I mean, yeah, I got it out, right? But 
I never fucking said that I did to uh, any of the fucking police officers. Uh, so it's literally just her word. Ben apparently fucking can't remember shit because he was under surgery. Because I already tried to fucking see what he could remember and, and, and mention. But, but I mean, Wait, literally... uh, were you... I do have one clarifying question. Yeah. Uh, do, you under... do you remember all your charges? Um... Or at a... the very least, uh, were you charged with brandishing a weapon? No, I was not because they didn't have any proof of that. However, that's they searched me because she had said that I fucking got a knife in that house, right? Okay. Solomon, correct me if I'm wrong. If you're not being charged with the original establishing crime, you also wouldn't have probable cause to search somebody on a scene of... I mean, especially a hospital. Uh, you would need to be yeah. charged for that crime for that search to be warranted. I also Warner. said... I also said to them that I didn't consent to the search either because I was like, I, at that point, I was like, I didn't know that they were actually looking for me. I was like, I haven't done anything wrong. So I said, I don't consent to the search at all. And they still proceeded to search me. So this gets down... Did they search you or did they frisk you then search you? They frisked me in his session. All right, yeah, that gets yeah, into so reasonable it. suspicion would cover that. Yeah, this is kind of a Terry frisk. If the if they didn't have a reason to do it, like so, just to be clear, they said don't move, and then you like went back into the room after they ordered you. They yeah, they told me to to, to stop moving, and I was like, well, no, I, was, I had my hand. Up. I was like, no, look, come come talk to the doctor. The doctor's in here, and I walked into the doctor, and then I stopped. Yeah, uh, so that's probably enough grounds for a Terry Frisk if the uh, police officer, or if they were told that you did have a knife. Uh, I'd have to read through uh, the Terry v. Ohio again just to be sure. Um, oh, my, I have it here. All right. Oh, hell yeah. Look at that. This uh, guy is prepared. The, the thing so is, right. the right to stop individual uh, without probable cause for arrest and frisk them. Um, they did have reasonable suspicion. Uh, you were committing, had com or were going to commit, or had committed a crime. That would be the brandishing of a weapon uh, upon the testimony of EMF. Uh, they didn't have uh, enough grounds to press that charge, but they were able to frisk and then further search you from the results of that frisk. Um, I, I don't think there would be a super great way to proceed here. Anything that has too much merit to it, yeah. uh, which I know uh, isn't the response you want, but I the would, thing is, though, right? Uh, why, why do they not question the doctor or anything like that about locking herself inside with her if she was in so much so danger? A lot of this is going to depend on the charges that you got. If you got the just as you said, the disobeying and then the illegal gun, and then other stuff related to possessions, yeah, there's really not too much, based on your story, that could be done about that. I could read through. Uh, we do use, like, the whole case law for, like, Terry v. Ohio and the everything in that, uh, like, the official decision. So I can read through that and see if that would apply. Were you detained and then searched? Yeah, or... I, was de yeah I was detained and then I was searched. I'd have to, I'm, I'm going to have to read through that again just to see. There might be something about how, I think Terry Frisks are about if there is a reasonable, I th no, I think there is a part about if crime being. I, there I'll there read has through. to be a reasonable belief about the suspect being presently armed and dangerous. Um, yeah. I wasn't even, that yeah, testimony, but I wasn't even, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't like trying to run away from them or anything like that. I literally was just had my hands up and I literally, you, you, you know where the, the you've, have you been in the surgery room, that, that area? Yeah. So you know these, uh, yeah, around. So the, the very first actual surgery room and those main front doors that go into the area, I walked from those front doors to the, to the surgery room doors and they said, talk to the doctor there with my hands up. And then they fucking, they cuffed me and detained me and I didn't All right, even and were you the cuffed? It, were you cuffed and then searched? Yes. Cuffed and then pressed. All right. That's where you... I, I, I don't want to say whether you would have something. I'll look into this more. Um, I think... 
I'd concur with Mr. Cross here that it's not very likely that you have any case, but um, I think it would still be worth it to go through the process of FOIAing the report about you when it is ready. Um, so I can uh, I can get on that, uh, and so that would basically just allow us to see the report of what happened to you, and we would be able to. Uh, see like what testimony they got there what uh what evidence they have and what they say happened which would give us a better idea on how to proceed and just to be clear you did not plead guilty to any of these charges no. did you all right oh well, that's good um for yeah, clarification I, what do you want out of uh who do you this is a lawsuit against the police or honestly well i feel like the doctor didn't fucking take care of her fucking patients properly and I feel like she fucking she missed a couple steps as well because wouldn't it make sense to at least lock the doors or when I asked if I could leave you know I asked her to unlock doors so I could leave she she still didn't she kept me locked in there with her until the yeah. cops were okay there. um like, why would you lock me in there with you when I when she literally could have unlocked the door and let me leave but she didn't. I was locked. She locked me in there with her. Makes no yeah. sense. Yeah. Uh, I would. I would say that the way to approach this, in my opinion, would be to go through an appeal process, uh, try to get some of these charges dropped, or try to get rulings and try to get stuff out on the record of that, because there is well, some type of argument. Yeah. Well, the the thing is, right? I mean, the charges that I'm pretty sure they've got me on, uh, a. a, a a, a fair enough right because they did find shit on me like you know an illegal firearm things like that right however what led up to that you know that that none of that wouldn't have happened if she had to just fucking let me leave you know what i mean yeah like, um it's, it's like it's like so what she has done is is fucked like this doesn't make any sense yeah i definitely no, I... do think she could have considered i mean you you were in a car crash moments before right yeah you know you were just recovering your friend was still in active surgery uh i don't think there would have been i think there could have been a little bit of wheel room to not interpret that as a, a, a you know meaningful threat you didn't threaten anyone i never did saying i never did it all you just had a weapon out and i mean no they they use scalpels as well with brain damage and you know recovering from that adrenaline crash i, I could easily interpret well, that as you just trying to be helpful so when unfortunately you... that doesn't fall that much onto the police that's just circumstance for their frisk yeah um when you said you took something out of their pocket uh, your friend's pockets was that like just going through it like normal yeah, 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 yeah. I literally asked yeah. asked them, and that is a bit groggy. And it was literally a job that we were both doing together. Yeah, so I think that is probably more than the knife what got you in there. Because if you're taking there stuff, that, like, that, and she does Well, that was never mentioned, and I got his consent. None of that, uh, that, none of that me going through the pockets was even mentioned at all, at anything. Did she hear him consent, or did she see you do she, that? Yeah, or? she was right beside, she was right beside there. All right, so she him. heard him say and, that and that I was okay? That, and I said that I was going to go and hand in the, the news story to Weasel News for us, and I literally asked him to call me, but he's a bit groggy, so I was like, to make sure that he got the message, I asked her to tell him to call me when he's out of surgery. Gotcha. All right, well, I think the way to go forward with this, uh, it'll probably take a few days, but I can try and FOIA the report, and once you get the... Uh, once you get the report, uh, you can see what the police said happened. And uh, as for the search, there might be something you can do there. There might, because if you can say that the search was unlawful, basically all the charges related to the search go away. Um, and like all the hot or having an illegal gun type stuff. Uh, as for the doctor, I mean. I mean, she's got a duty of care, right? I mean, if if if, yeah. if people aren't meant to be in the surgery room, why'd she even let me in in the first place? You know what I mean? So there'd be an argument to suing her for false imprisonment, but that's kind of a weak one. 
I think honestly your friend would have, I think you would really want to see the police report in question to say, see what she said happened. Um, but honestly, if you're saying she endangered her patient, it would be your friend who would have a better chance of suing her who was the patient. Yeah. Um, you like, you would need to hear her reasoning to really like, if she didn't think you were a danger, but she said like, oh, he was stealing stuff from the patient, then yeah, that, that's something. But if it's just... It, it would a lot of it would depend on her reasoning, and her reasoning should be in the police report. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that would be the way to move forward uh, to do the FOIA process, and I can get in contact with you once we have it. Yeah. All right, that works for you. But I can also look into the law on this matter. Um, but I think, yeah, that would be the way forward. And we would also be able to see if you got any additional charges that could be disputed. That'd be, that'd be awesome, thank you. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna need... A, it's at least a bit of a bad taste in my mouth, you know what I mean? It's like, fuck me, like, if, you, if you're there fucking worried, yeah. like, just let me out. Let, <laughs> let the person that you're worried about out, away from you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I agree. There's there's something there, but I just don't think like technically she may have broken the law depending on her beliefs at the time by locking you in there. But uh it, it would just be a tough case to argue. Yeah. Well I mean right, well uh, actually no, the, the the police are the ones that unlock the door. So I even said to them, I was like, How do you think I even got in here if I can't unlock those fucking doors? It's the doctor and you guys. So obviously the doctor's let me in and the doctor needs to let me out. And I told the cops that I asked her and she didn't let me out. She didn't, she didn't unlock the door. I told the cops that. I was like, there's no way that I got in here without being let in. Yep. And they, yeah, because I, they, I... they, they unlocked the door. So they know they unlocked the door. And I was there waiting yeah. to get out. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but I ju I'm just saying that there's ways that she could argue that that would probably lead to the judge finding that she was not, you weren't owed any money. Like, just as a hypothetical, I'm not saying this is the case, but if she said that I thought he was a clear and present danger to maybe not this patient, but other patients, if he had a knife and he was taking stuff from pa down patients, and she didn't want to let you back into the hospital property because of that. And she thought you might be something like that. Like, I'm just completely spitballing here. I'm not saying that's what the case is, but I think we would need the report. And in the report should be testimony from her about why she did what she did. And with that, you can, we could, I can provide that to you and we can decide how to move forward from there. Yeah, fair, fair. So if she had, if, if in that testimony, right? Because she's probably already done one, right? Is that right? Uh, when did this happen? Oh, fucking... Probably about two hours ago. Yeah, they should already have her testimony. So, if she hasn't even said anything like that, like that, this is why she... Kept, if they haven't asked her why she kept, kept me in there and she hasn't said anything about why she kept me in there, then what? Uh, then we can think about how to proceed then. Uh, if it is not in the report, then, it, you know, we just kind of have to speculate. I would assume that at something, at the very least, would be in the report that we could go off of on the cop side, because they kind of have to say, like, why they showed up at the hospital with six units and all that. Yeah. And there's probably going to be some form of 911 call uh, yeah, that was, was made that yeah. would... Yeah, so that would probably, that would almost certainly be in the report, and we could go off of that, even if they don't have, like, an actual interview. Um, but if there is actually nothing there, then honestly, it, it just kind of helps our chances in appeal. They would probably still call her in as a witness, but uh, it, it's, 
it'll be a, l a little bit messy, but I, I don't want to speculate too much on what we do if there isn't anything in the report before we get the report. You know. All right. All right. Um, so I'm going to have to go. We can go down for a bit. I need to look at the new FOIA legislation because they changed how the process is done. I think I might need an email from you, but we can go down and talk about it there. Do you, do you still need me right now? Uh, yeah, just for a few minutes, right. probably. Oh uh, yeah, that's what they did me. They did me with felony trespassing, disobeying a, a, a peace officer, um, criminal possession of a firearm, class one. Um, and I think misdemeanor possession of marijuana. All right, so the felony trespassing is very interesting. That I think there is a good chance you would be able to appeal that. 